Hey team, welcome to another Forcepoint Tech Talk episode. In this video, we are going to go through how to customize the Forcepoint DLP endpoint confirmation page. Don't forget to leave us a comment if you have any ideas for other videos. Please hit that like button and subscribe to show your support for this channel. Enjoy! The Forcepoint DLP solution is designed to protect your sensitive data. As we've discussed in other videos, there are a few different actions that can be applied when a DLP policy is violated. These actions include audit, block, confirm, and encrypt. This video will cover the confirm action specifically. Here you can see what the default confirmation page looks like when the action is triggered. What we're going to do in this video is go through the steps to customize this page. This will help you make the, your user experience more specific for your environment. So let's get started. For this video, we will be following the process outlined in the article below titled Customizing Forcepoint DLP Endpoint Client Messages. Please check the resources for the link. The first thing to mention here is that the confirmation page can have a maximum of five messages that are limited to 70 characters. This process has to be done from the FSM server. On the FSM, navigate to the WebSense installation directory. By default, this is C, Program Files, x86, WebSense. Then navigate to the Data Security, Custom, Endpoint, Message Files folder. Here you should see a list of the message template files for different languages. In this video, we will edit the English one. As always, to be safe, let's create a copy of the file. I would recommend installing Notepad++ since when I went through this process, I couldn't save it from WordPad as an XML and Notepad messes up the format. Once you have created the copy, open it in Notepad++. There are multiple fields that are customizable through here. I went ahead and made an easy reference guide for which fields equal which field ID, so I'll go ahead and leave this up on the side of the screen while we're going through the customization process. Here we will just go through the editing process of the XML, which should be pretty straightforward, but make sure you pay close attention to the formatting. I'm not going to narrate everything that I'm doing here, but you can just watch it, it'll just be a minute. Now that we have customized this file, we need to save it as an XML. Once this is saved, navigate back to the FSM. On the Data Security tab, go to Settings, Deployment, Endpoint Profiles, Properties. Here, check the box for Set Message Template to, then select the file that you just customized. Finally, click Deploy. Now that the changes have been pushed, let's see what it looks like on the client side. From the client machine, open up the endpoint interface by clicking on the icon in the taskbar or right click and select the endpoint interface. Once this is up, click the update button to make sure it pulls down the new XML. You can check the log viewer as well on the endpoint to see if there are any errors when importing the file. If there are, then you need to go back and see where the formatting was messed up during the editing then repeat these last steps. If you see that the import was successful, as you can see on the screen now, then trigger an incident that has the confirm action. Here for me, I have the print channel set to confirm, so we'll test with that. There's the prompt, and as we can see, the changes we made are there as well. If you do not see your customizations, then check the log viewer and make sure that your import was successful. Thanks for watching this video where we were able to go through how to customize the Forcepoint DLP endpoint confirmation page. If you found this video helpful, then please hit that like button and subscribe to let us know that we're making videos you want to see. If you have any other comments or questions, then drop us a comment below. See you next time.